Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Twilight Eyes by Dean R. Kuntz. And I put the emphasis on the R there because the dude l lost something when he dropped the R. Um, he lost some good stuff and uh, he lost some bad stuff uh, also. Uh, but the number one thing, I want to I wanna preface this because I don't want to offend anybody unnecessarily. So if you don't like uh, hearing about seminal fluid, I'm going to try to put this as nice as possible, uh, please go ahead and click away uh, because we'll be talking about semen, unfortunately. <laughs> Anywho, so Twilight Eyes is a book about a man who goes by the name Slim McKenzie. Uh, he can see creatures that he calls gargoyles that are hidden deep within uh, human beings. The first book I'm going to call it is called Twilight Eyes. The second part or the second book is called Dark Lightning. Dark Lightning was never released on its own but Twilight Eyes was. Um, he released Twilight Eyes in high, hardcover. Um, I'm not sure if he released it, if it came out in paperback by itself but it was called The Land of Enchantment. Next when the expanded edition came out, he he tacked on this section called Dark Lightning, which is about 200 pages, roughly, in this version, anyways. Um, the first book is about 250 pages. So, when he did that, he extended a story that I feel he did not need to extend. The first book, or the first part, I'm just going to go ahead and call it the first book, because that's how I look at this, or The Land of Enchantment that he later entitled Twilight Eyes, um is amazing. There, there, I have not read, not even, not even Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes invokes the same emotions, visuals, senses, all that stuff. And not even that one comes close to the first 200, roughly 200 pages of this book. Um, everything that happens in the carnival, I can see, taste, smell, hear, all of it. He, this is the best writing Dean Koontz has ever done. And then you get to the second half of the book, and they leave the carnival, and it's just not very good. Uh, the ending feels rushed. The ending of both sections feels rushed, but the ending of the second one feels, I mean, it just feels, it just peters out. I don't, I don't like it. There is a really cool scene. I think it's in a basement, a dungeon, some kind of, some kind of something like that. But uh, th there are hints of greatness and all those hints of greatness are in the first book. Um, I have never read anything that brought me that close to a carnival experience without actually being in a carnival. Now I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna talk about some issues that I found and I mean it's not even the fact that uh, <laughs> it's not even that Dean Koontz wrote about semen um, or that he has a I don't know, back in his earlier career, he had a <laughs> he had a very strange obsession with bringing it up, and even later on in his career, in uh, his book The Taking, he describes the rain in that book as seminal, as, uh, well, I don't, <laughs> is that the right word? It's like smelling and having the texture of semen. Um, and then <laughs> we have the stuff in this book, where he goes even farther. Now I was speaking to uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jim, Jim Herbert, and he's on YouTube also. Check him out. I'll leave a link down the doobly doo. But I was talking to him, and he said he read an interview with Dean Koontz that said something to the fact that there was uh, he had to write. He had, sorry, he had to add in sex scenes to his books uh, due to the publisher wanting them and demanding them. <laughs> so, but that didn't make any sense, Jim goes on to say, uh, because he, because Dean Koontz, to support himself early in his career, wrote erotica, or porn, or whatever you want to call it. Um, yes, yes, I understand, porn and erotica are two different things. Okay, alright, go on. So, I'm going to read you, uh, I'm going to have to pull this up on Instagram. I'm going to read you the first, <laughs> the first time uh, he, he says something about... Uh, the fluid, and then we'll move on to the second time. So, uh, they, they <laughs> Rhea and Slim have just got through having sex, 
And this is, they've, I guess he's taken her back to her tent or wherever she lives, the trailer, whatever it is. And uh, I'll just read it to you. She said, I can still, I can still feel you within me, your seed, still so hot inside me. Well, I can't even read this <laughs> without laughing. Okay. I can still feel you within me, your seed, still so hot inside me, burning. I'll take it to bed with me. Curl myself around the heat of your seed, and it'll be like a watch fire through the night, keeping the bad dreams away. No graveyards tonight, Slim. No, not tonight. <laughs> <Who>? <laughs> so that's the first time. That's in the first half of the book, or the, the first book, in Twilight Eyes. But then, <laughs> like I said on, on uh, Instagram, because I, I uh, screenshot, well, I didn't screenshot these. I took pictures of the pages. He, he's back on that bullshit. So, later, back at the trailer, we made love. In the amber light of the bedside lamp, her tanned body seemed to be made of honey and cinnamon-colored velvet, except where her skimpy two-piece bathing, two bathing suit had shielded her from the sun, and there the flawless fabric of her was paler and even softer. When, deep within her, my silken semen suddenly began to unravel in... <laughs> ah, I can't do it! Okay. Whew. When deep within her, my silken semen suddenly began to unravel in swift liquid threads, it seemed that those filaments were sewing us together, stitching body to body and soul to soul. The way this dude romanticizes semen, sperm, spunk, cum, whatever you want to call it, is just weird to me. Um, I've, I've never been that attached to my own stuff. I don't know a woman. But it, it, this um, hashtag cum tribute on Instagram. Yeah, you, you check that out for yourself. I ended up on the wrong side of Instagram one night being curious and oh my. Anyways, this video just got demonetized over and over again. So I probably won't even take the time to monetize it. I had fun shooting this. If you had fun watching it, let me know down there in the comments below. Especially if you were offended, let me know, um, so I won't make another one of these. Because I don't want to needlessly offend too many people. I mean, if I'm looking to offend, that's a, that's a different story. So until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review, kind of. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!